Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're listening to this. This is the From Dublin to Cleveland show, uh, hosted by, of course, as always, myself, Logan Howard. Um, the Will Turner to, of course, my Jack Sparrow sitting to my right. Uh, Brendan Thomas Merritt. How are you this morning, Brendan? I'm great, friends. Always great. How are you? How's everything's going? It's going well. Going well. Beautiful day today. So, um, so for everyone listening, we're going to do something. Um, how do you want to put it, Brendan? <laughs> mildly, uh, mildly edgy. I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere between mildly He's He's not edgy to excommunication worthy sacrilegious. Today, people, we are revealing yep, yeah. the untold that's, that's about story of the Book of Shadrach, the long lost, yeah, thought that's never that's written 67th book of the Bible. Needless to say, it's a tall tale. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brendan, if you want to, if you want to start us off, as because he'll be the, it'll be epic. We'll, we'll each have our lines as we go through this story. Yeah. It'll be epic. That it will be. <laughs> Gilgamesh's tale is nothing on us. So guys, the way this is going to go is I'm going to read the skeleton of the story. Um, give you all the general outline and overview. And then my amazing co-host is going to fill in all the juiciest details of this most epic Holy Spirit revealed narrative. All right, then. <laughs> Once there was a man named Shadrach. <laughs> Beautiful, strong, Israeli name. <laughs> Traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, he fell among the thorns. <laughs> and the thorns sprang up and choked him. This decision did not strike uh, strike the, his liver as an arrow would, or a bird darting to a snare. Um, he, nor did he know that it would not cost him his life. I don't know how many negatives are in that sentence, but keep them coming. <laughs> However, <laughs> it did make him exceedingly poor. And as he went on, he met. He met Jesus in a tax office, and Jesus said to him, Hey, come follow me. <laughs> the man replied, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. And then he went away sad. As you do. And as he went along, as you do. <laughs> he came across a tent. In which he heard a tent peg being hammered into a sleeping man's skull. <laughs> Jail, <laughs> her name is a bit ironic, <laughs> Jail, the killer, came out of the tent. To keep him quiet, she gave him 1,000 talents of gold and 100 changes of raiment, and he got into the chariot. And he drove very furiously, and when he was driving under a big juniper tree, his hair caught on a limb of that tree. And as he hung there many days, and the ravens brought him food to eat and water to drink, and he ate 5,000 loaves of bread and two fishes. <laughs> Just another manic Monday. One night, when he was <laughs> hanging there asleep, his wife, Delilah, came along. And she was playing the harp and bellowing at the top of her lungs, saying, These are the days of Elijah! And cut off his hair. <laughs> and he dropped. And he lost all of his strength for having his hair cut off. <laughs> and he fell on the stony ground. But he got up and went on. And it began to rain. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights. <sighs> And he hid himself in a cave. Draped in camel skins, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. On the third night. The stone was rolled away. 
Amen. <laughs> After 40 <laughs> years of living in the wilderness, he went on. <laughs> till he met a servant who said, Come, take supper at my house. And Shadrach made an excuse and said, No, I won't go. I have married a wife and I cannot go. <laughs> <laughs> Love that rationale. The servant pressed him. <laughs> Shadrach said. Let me first go and bury my father. <laughs> Seems reasonable. <laughs> and the servant begged and pleaded the opportunity to make his first ever friend. This time, Shadrach replied. I will come, but first let me bid farewell to those who are at my house. <laughs> and he said it in that accent. Holy Spirit has just confirmed it. <laughs> and the servant went out <laughs> in the highways and the hedges and compelled him, saying, No one who has put his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> then the servant looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Shadrach... <laughs> Rested with his fathers very many days. I do not think that means what you think it means. <laughs> After eating a piece of bread. <laughs> Satan entered him and Jesus said, what you do, do quickly. And he went on and came to Jericho. <laughs> and on the seventh day, he rested. All this guy ever seems to do is accept bribes and rest. And when he finally got to Jericho, he looked up and saw old Queen Jezebel sitting high up at a window, having her best interests in mind. He called up to her. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. She laughed at him, saying, God elevates the humble, but the haughty he brings down. No wonder her children grow to be killers if the mother had that voice. Then he said, Throw her down. <laughs> the whitewashed tomb Pharisees. Threw her down 70 times 7, saying, The voice of a god, but not of man. <laughs> <laughs> and of the fragments that remained, they picked up twelve baskets full, <laughs> besides women and children. <laughs> and they said, Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, whose wife do you think she will be in that judgment day? <laughs> <sighs> no. The rest of the acts of Shadrach, all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the long lost 67th book of the Bible, the book of Shadrach? <laughs> the end. <laughs> I think that was just like the most amazing. Oh, Brendan, we're going to get so much hate for that. In history of storytelling. <laughs> so much hate. We're going to get so much hate. Say it, there. It'll be worth this. I will take the heat on this one. This was my idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, guys. You know what? <laughs> oh. Has humanity ever really liked Revelation when they've received it? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. That was time well spent. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> oh goodness gracious um, in that case guys we moved into the time of being together where we crack open 
the words. And uh, we read a short piece of scripture and we share some examples of how we've seen it unfold in our own lives or how we've appropriated it. Uh, <laughs> as you've probably seen from the previous three podcasts, we do the thing with the Book of Proverbs. I promise you, it's not intentional. It will not always be a proverb, but that book is just so good. And so the one for today <laughs> is Proverbs 24. 30 to 34. Proverbs 24, 30 to 34. One day I walked by the field of an old lazy bones, and then passed the vineyard of a lout. They were overgrown with weeds, thick with thistles, all the fences broken down. I took a long look and pondered what I saw. The fields preached me a sermon, and I listened. A nap here, a nap there, a day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. You know what comes next? Just this. You can look forward to a dirt poor life with poverty as your permanent house guest. And the people of God said... Amen, amen, and amen. But do not receive the dirt poor <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> so as I read that <laughs> passage of scripture, I don't think of it in terms of physical fields and vineyards, but rather different areas of our lives. God has given all of us a plot of earth, whether it's our home, our education, our friendships, relatives, communities, sports clubs. And in all of those areas of our lives, there is the potential for growth. The walls don't have to be broken down. The fields don't have to be overrun with thistles and thorns. The vineyards don't have to be incapable of producing wine. And if we show up, and we show Christ, and we put on our spiritual gardening gloves when need be, we have the ability to uproot the weeds that the enemy has already sown. Because even if we are complacent about owning our zone, tending to our field, sowing good seed in the lives of the people that we encounter, the enemy is barrels worth the bad seed we will gladly throw all over the place. So when you see that someone in your family is sick, do what you can to help restore them. If you see that there is a sink full of dishes, wash them. It takes five minutes. If you're at your football club and you see that the new kid looks lonely. You know, don't further isolate them by turning your back. But open your heart to them. Show the love of Jesus. Help them to feel included. Um, if you're at work and you see illegal things going on, don't be part of it. Part of showing the love of Jesus is exposing darkness. And it's not about teaching works-based salvation, but it's about seeing people in situations with the eyes of Christ, really opening your eyes to see, your ears to hear, and your heart to know and understand what exactly is going on in the world around you on a deeper level, on a more profound level, in such a way that sees the root causes of the thorns and the weeds and the thistles, yanking them up and scattering the good seeds of Jesus Christ. Prayerfully, faithfully, obediently, and hoping that God's going to work it all together for the good of those 
with whom you share space in life. All right, Logan. So uh, what do you find that sh- these last few verses in Proverbs 24 speak to you? So I guess the thing I want to, I get, I, I'm a very practical person. So I kind of want to simplify it and give it like a phrase. And I guess the phrase that I would, I would think um, it's a phrase that is that a football team, um, for those of you who don't, watch NFL football, American version of football. Um, There's a team called New England Patriots, and they have been on top of the world for years and years. They've won six, six Super Bowls in the last few years, and they have a very simple motto. And the very simple motto is this, do your job. And that's basically what we can say for these verses is do your job. Wherever you're called to, whatever God has put you in, do your job. So if he's called you to um, to work hard, like he, he talks about being in a field. If you're supposed to, if you're a farmer, do your, do your job, go out, plant seeds, do that stuff. If we're all called and says that we're all called those of us who know Jesus Christ, our Lord and savior to be witnesses of him, to share with people. So guess what? We have to do our job and go out and do that. Um, because that's what he asks us to do. Um, it's, it's one of those things that we, we like to make it into a rule. Like Brendan said, we like to make it, well, that's a workspace salvation. I have to work for it. It shouldn't have to work for it. It's not about a workspace salvation. It's about doing it because we love God. We, we love him. We want to worship him. So we're going to do our job. We're going to do what we're supposed to do. Um, and I think the other thing on top of it, when we're not doing our jobs or when we're um, bored or when we're doing not doing stuff, we're so easily susceptible for temptation to not to continue not doing first of all what we're supposed to be doing and second of all um it it just we we're not doing it we're not doing our jobs we're not focusing and um we're being lazy and we're being unproductive and so god is not blessing us in those times when we're not doing what he asks us to do um and thankful he's gracious he doesn't demand that we're we be productive all the time um, and it's okay to watch movies or it's okay to do stuff every so often. Cause we do need to, we are human. We do need to relax every so often, but when it becomes the main arc of our lives, that's when it gets dangerous when we're not doing what we're supposed to do all the time and we're avoiding what he wants us to do. Um, so that, that is my, my thing this week. Do your, do your job, go, go out, do your job, whatever God has called you to do, do it to the best of your ability, do it with everything you've got for him because you love him because you care for him. And make sure you're not getting bored and you're not get putting yourself in situations where you can be tempted to do the wrong thing. Um, make sure you're keeping busy and focused on him. So that, that's what I would add. Um, before we, we close up, uh, I do want to say if you need to get a hold of us and send us all your hate mail about that crazy story that we shared today that is uh, definitely not true, no matter what Brendan says. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Send us your hate mail at lhawa62 at wgu.edu. We will, of course, be reading that hate mail out eventually and get a good laugh out of it. Um, but so if, if that's your motivation just to get a laugh out of us, that, that works too. Um, but yeah, send, send hate mail, send your love eat mails, whatever you want to do. Say how you want to move to Ireland uh, so you can hang out with Brendan. You know, I'm sure he's down for that. Um, whatever it is you want to send us, send it over. Uh, it's again, L H O W a 62 at edu. So I will turn it over to Brent. Oh brother. He's, he's after these Calvinist guys. If you're a Calvinist, <laughs> turn off now. <laughs> uh, oh, Brendan, I'll let you close us up. <laughs> so I'll turn it over to Brendan. You're not welcome here. We don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for joining us today we hope you got a, a good chuckle out of the past 20 minutes or so we know we've enjoyed ourselves um have a wonderful rest of your day have such a blessed week and we just pray that god goes with you and before you in everything that you do this week that you will go forth in joy Amen. And that in any areas of your lives where you find yourselves afflicted Amen. with fear, anxiety, or stress, that the peace of Holy Spirit that is within you 
because the implant is gross, will drown that out. And that you will experience his joy, his life, his energy, his zeal, and his fun. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.